So I'm starting my morning with a new healthy habit I developed. So this right here is a mini kettle cooker from Boydeem. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. This brand not only has the cutest and most aesthetically pleasing kitchen um, appliances, they are also very unique, very different than what I've ever seen before. Because this right here is a kettle cooker that you can actually use not just to boil water with, but also to create fresh fruit infused teas, which is something I've added to my morning routine. And because of its super cute mini size, it's perfect for smaller kitchens or honestly even have on your desk. How cute is this, right? Um, I also love that it's glass and uh, you can also adjust the minutes it's cooking as well as the temperature, which is great. And then last but not least, it has this little uh, filter. So when Whenever you're drinking tea you don't have to worry about getting any like weird particles but you can also use this to cook soup in as well as rice so it's such a small and aesthetically pleasing kettle cooker that you can use for so many different purposes so i'm literally obsessed i think this is the cutest thing ever so i am going to set the temperature to 60 degrees and we're going to turn it on and then we're just going to wait until it's done So as you can see, the tea finished boiling and I have this really cute uh, teapot and cup set that I'm going to drink my morning tea out of. And what I also really like about this mini kettle is the fact that it has 8 hour automatic heat preservation and you can even manually turn off this heat preservation if you, for example, don't want a hot drink um, during hotter times. Let's do a little taste test. How pretty is this light baby pink tea? I'm obsessed and it's perfect to start my morning with. this vlog that I'm actually sitting down and having a little chit chat with you. I'm in the process of getting ready for today. I just finished doing my morning routine, which by the way, if you guys want to see an updated morning routine, let me know in the comments down below because it's been a while <laughs> since I filmed one and I'm curious if you guys are interested. So yeah, let me know. Also, next thing, I wanted to thank you so much for all the sweet messages I received on my last vlog after kind of disappearing for a while on YouTube. I'm honestly so blessed with having a community like you and um, yeah, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So thank you so, so much for all your sweet messages and support and encouragement and understanding. Um, I'm going to show you my full outfit later. But this has been one of my go-to outfits and I feel like these pants are a pair of pants that everyone needs in their wardrobe. I both have my best friends who also bought these pants because of me, as well as lots of people on Instagram who DM'd me about a link for these pants. Um, let me quickly stand up for you. They're these mid, like, yeah, I guess it's a mid-rise cargo pants they're still 
decently high. I know like low rise pants are super trendy, but I just can't do low rise. I will never be able to low to do low rise. My love handle game is just too strong <laughs> to pull that stuff off. Um, but this is like a happy medium for me. And they're also really comfortable. They are from ASOS. Um, I think this is actually from Bershka. Come in lots of different colors. And I have this really pretty faded um, mint green color. A must have. I think they're like 30 or 35 bucks such a good deal so i will have linked them in the description box down below because i feel like everyone needs these pants and i ordered them in multiple colors but only allowed myself to keep one and now i kind of regret it and i might pick them up in other colors as well also um, they come in both regular as well as petite and i have them in petite length so for my one meter 55 centimeters or five foot one height they're perfect also, my top is from Zara, and it's uh, featured in my last Zara haul that I did recently. So, if you're curious about that, you can check out that video. Anyways, I'm now going to finish up my makeup, and after, I have lots of work to do. I also have a fun dinner event tonight with Pixie, which I'm very excited for. Um, and I also want to have a heart-to-heart -heart with you guys about something that has been a big part of my life and i feel like i've never really dedicated a vlog or a video to this and that is living by yourself so living alone and also living alone in a foreign country as well as specifically living in los angeles and how my journey of moving from the Netherlands to here has been. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because I'm pretty much hitting my halfway mark of my um, stay here in the US. I've lived about two and a half years in LA now and I have a total of five years. So yeah, two and a half years to go um, until I need to, you know, figure out if I wanna stay here, go through the immigration process again, or if I want to go back home and yeah I feel like um, it's something I haven't really talked about that much even though it's a really big part of my life it's something I talk about a lot with my friends because most of my friends here are also all foreign so they all can relate um, and I feel like this is a topic that a lot of people are quite unaware of um, I notice it both from you know my foreign friends back home because obviously how would they know anything about the immigration system in the US they have like no idea but also a lot of Americans here actually have no idea how hard it is to legally immigrate into this country and that's just the process alone just like moving to a different country is very um, challenging too but I d I'm not trying to be a victim or anything like that I'm very grateful to be here it was obviously 100% my choice I wasn't forced I you know grew up in a very wealthy privileged country I can go home oh my gosh there's always background noise I can go home you know and live a safe life so I'm obviously coming from a very privileged position so I, I want to put that out there in no way am I trying to throw a pity party for myself but it's more that I um, I wish I knew these things going into the immigration process in the US because I had pretty much no clue um, when it comes to this so yeah I'm, I'm more sharing this from my experience and maybe as some educational purposes rather than, you know, trying to come across um, as if I'm pitying myself or anything because I don't. Um, yeah. Anyways, let me finish my makeup and then we'll have that heart to heart. Alright guys, so this is the outfit I wanted to show you that I'm wearing today. Um, so as I already mentioned, my crop top is from Zara. I love that it's knitted, so it's not see-through even though it's white. Then uh, the infamous pants are my ASOS um, 
cargo pants and this is how they fit on the bottom and I paired them with my Nike Dunks in Harvest Moon I love this like peachy uh, orange color and then for jewelry I'm wearing my necklaces that I got from my mom and my grandma um, earrings from Amazon as well as my rings and um, yeah that is the full look I really like it and um, it's very comfortable as well some lunch um, this is also kind of my breakfast it's my first real meal of the day because I am still going pretty strong with intermittent fasting and I've been really obsessed with what I like to call an avocado toast and a lot of sides <laughs> um, so I just made myself obviously an avocado toast with Ezekiel bread microgreens then I have lentils some vegan feta and a side salad of tomatoes, more vegan feta, walnuts and arugula and some lemon squeezed on top. Um, I love eating a lot of greens um, so that is why my salad is uh, a good portion. So now I'm just going to enjoy this. It's a little later right now and I spent my day working and editing a lot of content for my clients and um, as promised earlier in this vlog I also wanted to do a little heart to heart about my experience moving to LA living here now for two and a half years because yeah this is the the mid mark of my um, stay here in the US and after that I kind of have to figure out where I'm gonna go with my life I don't think I would ever have expected everything that happened to me. Moving here right before the pandemic started um, was honestly the worst timing ever because instead of being able to build a life for myself, network, meet new people, I had to isolate. And then I also didn't know when I would be able to go back and see my family because there was a European travel ban. So I was pretty much stuck here in the US because if I would go back to Europe, I would not be able to re-enter the US. So that was pretty much my first year of living in LA, pretty much isolating by myself in my apartment. And um, especially when I look back at some of the vlogs that I filmed during that time, I am proud of myself for staying as productive and occupied as I could but man oh man was I in a bad place mentally and I'm in such a better place right now I look at these vlogs and they look aesthetic I'm doing like organizing cleaning all that stuff trying to seem you know kind of positive but I just know on the inside I was super sad and lonely and depressed I was this close to leaving and then my whole life changed again because i got into a relationship i, I don't want to go into too many details because i have talked about this extensively and also i just um, you know want to leave it in the past but being in that relationship and also doing long distance for five months and then breaking up two weeks after he um returned that's was a blessing in disguise let's keep things positive it was a blessing in disguise because it taught me very valuable lessons i put my life on hold for this person because i felt like i wasn't living if i wasn't living with him if that makes sense maybe sounds kind of pathetic but um yeah i guess i just really wanted this relationship to work and i really wanted to have a life partner a team together and um i think that comes from a fear that I was scared that I wouldn't be able to do these things alone even though I'm highly independent and you know I moved to this country by myself there is I guess an imposter syndrome going on a fear that I am not able to do this myself and that I need someone with me in order to do all these things I realized that yeah I might feel afraid to be alone or scared but in the end I've been by myself 
for 27 years. I mean, obviously I have my family, but you know, I, I've been pretty independent all those years. I also gained the confidence and kind of the calmness that whatever life will throw at me, I will be okay independent. This is not because I'm bitter or I don't believe in love or anything like that, but it's more of a peace, an inner peace that I found that just knowing that if I'm not with someone, if I don't find someone, I'm going to be okay and I'm going to have still an amazing life. My happiness is not dependent on a life partner or me feeling alone is not dependent on that because I actually did build a life for myself, especially when I started roller skating. The biggest takeaways for anyone moving abroad or, you know, um, moving specifically to LA is first of all, be confident in yourself. It can be very scary to move by yourself without knowing anyone, not really knowing what you know your life is going to entail, but don't stop believing in yourself. Even just being able to move to a different country by yourself takes a lot of courage. Um, so the fact that you even made that decision says a lot about you and I am 100% convinced you're going to be okay and you being okay doesn't mean that you have to stay abroad forever like if you want to go back at some point that's not a failure that's you just you know deciding that it wasn't for you and that's totally fine as well then second thing and that's something that I kind of struggle with I tend to be a little bit um, shy or observant when it comes to meeting new people, I find it hard to start a conversation. Um, I always kind of feel embarrassed or stupid or scared that I'm going to say the wrong thing. Most people, especially I would say in the US, are very like polite and love their small talk, which makes it much easier to just start talking to them um, and have like a brief conversation. I also love doing that through a hobby, through a shared passion. For me, it's obviously roller skating, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, it can be shared music, other hobbies, something artsy. Just try to meet people in that way because you will always have something to talk about because you are at an activity or event. And my third and last tip, because I don't want to make this too long, is um, to really stay on top of your immigration status. Especially here in the US, the immigration system is so broken and um, it's so complicated. So it's very important that whenever, you know, your status is expiring, your visa is expiring, something like that, you start early with thinking about what your next steps are going to be. And sometimes that can feel like a real big pressure because it almost feels like your life is on a timeline. And obviously we are all on a timeline, but when you're on a visa, it's, it's even more so. Sometimes I even have this feeling that I wake up and I'm incredibly grateful to wake up here. So it also has like a positive aspect because you're very aware of every day you spend in the place you are. But it also obviously can make you feel anxious and stressed because you know your time is slipping away. So start early, start figuring out if you want to stay, what you need to do in order to stay. Make sure you give yourself enough time to prepare all the documentation, hire a lawyer, and um, just educate yourself as much as you can on your alternatives, uh, on all your options, because it is so important that if you have the chance to stay in status and to not um, you know, make the mistake of losing your status, losing your visa, and, becoming um, out of status, which just means that you don't have any legal paper here. And then it becomes incredibly difficult to get some um, legal residency here again. So that's just one thing that I wish I could tell everyone. Start early, make a plan on what you're going to do when your papers expire. With that being said, um, I think I kind of finished this heart to heart, but if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I would gladly answer them uh, either in the comments or in a different video. And um, now it is time to do a little bit more work. <laughs> <laughs>
really exciting delivery from one of my favorite cookware brands, which is called Our Place. I'm a big fangirl for this brand because I love their aesthetic, but if you are not familiar with them, they are a non-toxic and ceramic-based cookware brands. They have the most aesthetically pleasing cookware in lots of gorgeous colors. They also just had a collaboration with Selena Gomez, and I picked out two new items that I'm very excited to show you and I'm going to start off small first of all look at this gorgeously dangerous knife I already have quite a good knife set but my favorite knife out of this knife set is a knife kind of similar to this and whenever I cook with my friends I always end up only having like one favorite knife so it's really nice to have a second pair that i can use whenever i'm cooking with um, my girlfriends and then now for the big box this right here it looks so cute i also love that it says welcome to our place we saved you a seat makes me feel all cozy and warm inside um and this says everything you need to know about your always and ever pen it comes with a little spatula that I love. And then this is the beautiful glass lid. Okay, aren't these the most cutest like pan holders? They're made from the silicone material and they look so aesthetically pleasing, I love it. And then this beauty right here is my new cast iron pan and it's so heavy, oh my gosh. And I love this color. It's even more beautiful in real life. Can we take a moment for how aesthetically pleasing my cookware looks? I feel like this beautiful um, spice color complements the rose gold accents in my kitchen perfectly and I'm obsessed. I've used all the cookware from our place for such a long time and their quality is just really amazing. And I'm also very excited to try out my new cast iron pen. Yeah, definitely check out that description box if you need some new um, cookware. I have yet another unboxing that just arrived that I want to show you. This time from Public Desire. So I got three pairs and I'm going to show you what I got. So let's start with this one. Okay, we're starting off strong because these shoes are literally the prettiest princess heels ever. And I actually already had them, but I bought them again because unfortunately I broke one of the straps and it was impossible to make. So these are the most beautiful pearl little like cinderella slippers i'm obsessed with it and i feel like everyone needs a pair okay and then number two okay number two are these beautiful heels with a cute bow really big oversized bow on the side now these shoes are giving me all the bridal vibes i feel like these would be so cute for like a rehearsal dinner or anything like that so i just put on these bridal shoes and i have a few notes First of all, they are surprisingly comfortable. They don't hurt me anywhere, especially the strap around my toes is um, like not painful, which sometimes it tends to be. So I'm really happy about that. However, I don't really love the fact that they are like kind of extended. The end part, I don't know how to describe it. Um, it doesn't look terrible, but it does look a little weird to me. They're, they're very different than anything I have, and I love, love the bows. I think it's very extra and, and very cute. And last but not least, we have... Okay, these are a very simple black pair of heels in this kind of um, shiny lacquered material. And the heel is also very interesting because it's like thin but thick at the same time. Okay guys, last but not least, these black lacquered heels and they are so freaking comfortable and I feel like they look so cute on. I am completely obsessed. So if you're on the lookout for some classy and um, basic black heels, definitely check out these. Good evening guys. <laughs> did want to take you with me on a really fun dinner with my babes at Pixie. Pixie Beauty is one of my favorite makeup brands. I love their aesthetic because they use rose gold and the aesthetic of Pixie is like the name suggests very fairy like lots of green so that's what I went for today and I'm also wearing a Pixie look but right now my uber is here so I have to go 
You see here? Okay, perfect. All right, let's get going. Oh my gosh. Uh, I can never be on time. Even in law school times. All right, we are heading out the door. I'm taking you guys with me and yeah. That's it. Oh my gosh, I'm always late. Go figure, you were the trigger. You brought me to an obstructive view when you knew the picture was bigger. Who am I kidding? You from the beginning. You ruin everything, you do it every time. You are my enemy, you are no friend of my motherfucker. You motherfucking right. You know, you always know what to do with it. But you know me and you without you in it. Damn, I'm about to burn this bitch down. Think I need a light down. Cause I'm trying to wild out now. I know. So beautiful. Thank you. So, guys, I just got home from my pixie dinner and it was amazing and i have to say that the team at pixie is one of the kindest and sweetest and most genuine like people i've come across working in pr i just always get such a good and positive vibes from all the people there so before i'm going to remove my makeup and look like a bum <laughs> i wanted to give you guys a little unboxing of everything that i received starting with this beautiful drawing of me um, they hired a very talented illustrator um, i will link her instagram down below a cute pixie mirror as well as the fool on the glow bronze collection now i actually already have this beautiful rose gold hence held mirror for your um, bag as well as the full on the glow bronze collection because you guys know you saw me using it um, in this video so I'm actually going to do a little giveaway for you so you can be part of the pixie fairy family as well so you'll get all the shades and this mirror and I might throw in some other goodies as well I'm gonna keep it in this bag um, so all you have to do is Subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as my Instagram and um, TikTok. And then you can leave me a comment down below with your Instagram handle so I can find you and uh, the word pixie. And then I know that you have entered this giveaway. I have the Glow Mist with Propolis and Argan Oil. Looks very nice. And then this is a Detoxify Serum. Depuffing eye serum. Ooh, I like that. I feel like I need that tomorrow because I'm a little tired. Um, and this is the correction concentrate. And this lip gloss, it's the Lip Lift Max. Everybody at the event actually already unboxed this and used it and looked really good. So I'm very excited to try this. So again, thank you so much, Pixie, for having me. Um, don't forget to enter the giveaway. And with that, I'm going to bed and probably end this vlog as well. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this vlog and that you guys are glad that I'm back. And I'll talk Go to you soon. Bye guys. You were the trigger. You brought me to an obstructive view. When you knew the picture was bigger. Who am I kidding? You from the beginning. You ruin everything. You do it every time. You are my enemy. You are no friend of my motherfucker. You motherfucking right.